Hello everybody, hope you're having a fantastic day today. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Today I'm going to be covering how to make a tanky, bloodied commando build. Now of course you may want to, you know, change up a couple of things here or there, but I would pretty much stick to this build if you want to be tanky. Like this build keeps me alive like 90% of the time. You know, of course being a bloody build, you know, you can't help but die sometimes. So let's get into it here. So you're going to want 4 strength, 10 perception, 8 endurance, 6 charisma, 10 intelligence, 9 agility, and 9 luck. Now, you're going to have to have these set this way with legendary perk cards in order to use the perk cards that I'm going to show you in this next part. So just keep that in mind. I also want to point out it's Blocker and Bandolier under Barbarian here that I did decide to block in the video here for some reason. So anyway, it's level 2 Bandolier and level 3 Blocker under Strength compiled with Bar or Barbarian and uh, Traveling Pharmacy. So... Yeah, these are the perk cards I use, and I would stick to using them if you want to be tanky. Like I said, this isn't a damage output build, but you will do more than enough damage, which I'm going to show a little later in the video. This, this build is set to keep you alive. And again, these are the legendary perk cards that I'm using to help me get these perk cards. So if you do not have these maxed out all the way, then you won't be able to use the perk cards. You have to work towards it, right? Again, just let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I will gladly answer them as fast as I can for you. And just another little thing, sometimes I do swap out Serendipity for better criticals with this build. Um, it just does a little bit more damage if I'm going to be, you know, fighting a tankier enemy. Um, but for the most case, you don't really need it. Again, like I said, I'm going to show you, you can do more than enough damage, even without bloodied weapons. Okay, so these are the mutations. I would highly recommend that you have uh, Adrenal, um, Herd Mentality, and Scaly Skin. Those are like a must for this build. I do recommend Carnivore and Marsupial as well. And this is an unyielding set of Secret Service Armor, which is a must for this build as well. Um, I have a video on unyielding armor that I will link in the description in case you need a little bit more info on that. And like I said, this is a must for this build, and this is the Secret Service armor, like I said, and it's just really tanky that I find, and these are the rolls that I got on it, you know, so easier said than done to get these rolls, and I do recommend the shield at Secret Service under armor to go with it, the damage resistance on that seems to be the highest for most under armor, I don't know an under armor that has a higher damage resistance than the Secret Service. And again, if you need to know where to get these, after you complete, you know, some of the main quests, you will be able to come up to Vault 79 and buy it. I just, I don't want to spoil anything. That's just where you get it. You know, if you've already been there, this is where it is. And these will be your stats. Um, but stats, you know, you never know. Just wanted to point out that your poison resistance is a little bit low, so if you can get some rolls on your unyielding armor to help with that, that would be great. But I'm going to show you some videos here of the damage that it resistance that it actually has and again these are your stats so like you can see 36 to strength you're gonna have lots of carry weight and even 33 to intelligence you're gonna have you know a, a little bit of more ranking up uh, xp points and of course with charisma you're gonna basically have a built-in hard bargain but as you can see here like if you just keep an eye on your health especially like if you're near a big enemy you should you, you'll have more than enough time to stim pack with this build. And this is pretty much as bad as it's going to get, like, for this build because of the poison and the rads coming at me right now. You can see I had to run away eventually, but that's more than enough time to be like, hey, I'm in danger, maybe you should run away. So, and you do get better. You have to practice this type of bloody build is what we really call it, or an unyielding build, however you want to... Um, word it. You just have to practice it and get used to dying. Dying really isn't a big deal, but you just get better and better. And I'm telling you, if you don't like dying, this build is for you. And I just want to show here too, this is a vampire's weapon. You're almost invincible with this or a vampire's chainsaw, a vampire's um, enclave flamer. Easier said than done to, um, to acquire one. But I just wanted to point that out there. If you can get a vampire's weapon, you'll pretty much be invincible with this build. You'll be low on the damage output, but you will be pretty much invincible. 
And as you can see, like, I just let the behemoth hit me here, and he, he can't even kill me. And like I said, you should have more than enough time to know that you could run away from that. And these are like some of the tankier enemies, like regular super mutants or, you know, robots. Like they're not going to be able to do much damage to you. Just couldn't really do much to me. <laughs> And this is just a quad ultrasite uh, laser rifle. They have been buffed, but like it's nothing special. It's not a bloodied. And you can see it still destroys him very fast. So I do want to show you, because this is a bloody build, right? So this is a bloodied weapon. I just want to show the damage output that this build can still have. It's not amazing, but it definitely does the trick. Like look what it did to a Mirelurk King there. They, they can be pretty tanky. But just to show a Mirelurk Queen here, and I want to point out too that I'm not shooting her in the legs, which is her weak point. I'm actually going to be shooting her directly in the shell, which is very, um, basically, her defense is very high with her shell. So it's hard, basically, it's hard to damage her by shooting her in the shell. And you can see it's still doing lots of damage. But again, that's why I would suggest just having a mix of weapons. I, like, I love the quad railway rifle. It doesn't do as much damage, but it just keeps, you know... Like, damage per second, it probably does more because it just keeps hitting them, right, rather than having to reload. And again, this is the bloodied railway rifle here. You can see it just destroys regular mobs, no problem. And a behemoth. It pretty, I think it destroys it almost one clip here. Almost. I don't even think that was a full clip. But that's my point. It, you're still doing more than enough damage. It's not extremely overpowered. I wouldn't go fight Earl, Earl, Earl solo with this build. But it's definitely tanky and it will keep you alive. And it's a lot of fun and I, I just thought it was very, you know, universal and convenient. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. Let me know in the comments what you think if you're going to work towards this build. I've been using this build for months now and it's awesome. Um, thank you so much for watching everybody. Have a great day.